as he meets Ten in a real thriller. Hamburg Navy back gets set, aims and fires right down the middle and into the hands of Al Channel. Hamburg tries a nifty aerial. But out of nowhere comes Bob O'Dell, who intercepts and starts out on a terrific 40-yard run for a Penn touchdown. Now Penn's Joe Michaels punts to Navy's 40. Hamburg takes it, and here's a run with all the razzle-dazzle of a red-hot ball game. It's Navy all the way from his beats the Quakers 24 to 7. Army trounces the Wildcats. Wildcats ball. Tony Zemlinski, he's a mighty pass. Army's Glenn Davis intercepts. This 19-year-old fleet thrills the stands with a sensational 45-yard run back. Army's ball, T formation, and it's Davis again. This time around the Wildcats end for a cadet tally. Now quarterback Tom Lombardo pounds his midlines with interference threatening on all sides. He picks up 30 yards before Villanova's Al Postis catches up and knocks him out of bounds on the one yard line. The Army fires its biggest gun. Lombardo again. This time he aerials to Carl Anderson for another touchdown, and West Point wins 27 to nothing. A throng of 82,000 witnessed one of the most thrilling games of the season. Kelly, who jumped from the fighting Irish to the fighting Marines, aerials to Miller, and it's complete. He streaks down the sidelines past the Navy's big guns. Navy fires twice, but he seems ahead. Nearing the goal, Miller cuts to half speed and is hit from behind, but he crash dives for a Notre Dame touchdown. There's that man, Bertelli. He punts for the Irish, deep into his own territory with everybody on the run. Navy's Hillis Hume is on the receiving end and runs right into trouble. Now the middies strike again, this time through the air. Hal Hamburg sights his man and fires into the shadows around the Irish goal. Bill Barron takes it for a Navy score. Here's Bertelli's 10th touchdown pass for the season and his farewell appearance as the Irish win 33-6. Minnesota's ball. Bill Garnett's mighty toe boots into Wolverine territory. It's taken by Bill Daly, former Minnesota star, transferred by the Navy to Michigan. Bill runs it back 35 yards, but just as he breaks into the open, he trips and hits the dirt. It's a fake reverse, and there goes Leatherneck Hurst, flashing through tackle, heading for home and another Michigan score. The Gophers fight back. Geese aerials, and for a moment it looks good. But Michigan's Bob Gerlis intercepts and counterattacks for 30 yards. A smashing game and a great win for the Wolverines. With most of the Purdue Boilermakers signed up as Marine trainees, it's a Navy show either way it goes. Purdue kicks off, and the pigskin sails through the air, right down into the hands of Dewey Proctor, number 38, who runs it back for the Great Lakes Blue Jackets. Ray Jones, former Texas star, sends Steve Juswick pounding for pay dirt, and the stands go wild. Purdue's hard-hitting Butkovich tears through the Great Lakes line like a bullet. Purdue wins 23-13, but at that, it's a great day for the Navy. A gala day for the Bulldogs. Eli's ball. 
Ray Scott, with 160 pounds of dynamite, blasts one to Jack Carey, who drives hard for a first down before the Tigers send him crashing. Rain sends out the crowd that sees Yale held scoreless until the second period. Now scuffle aerials to Paul Walker. He breaks out of a Tiger trap and is down down the two-yard line. Let it rain, yells Carey as he reverses his field and goes for a first down. There's Gussell again. Of the 128 yards gained by rail rushes, Gussell runs up 119 and scores three touchdowns. Now Bob Pickett fires to Gussell, and not a Tiger lays a paw on him. Notre Dame's juggernaut rolls against the white uniform Northwestern 11. Reichovich takes out of Graham's punt and powerhouses right through the Wildcat defense to midfield. Now Johnny Lujak calls for the old Statue of Liberty play. He hands the ball to Creighton Miller, who takes it for 20 yards. Northwestern fights hard. Joe Scriba starts the counterattack and chalks up 25 yards before he's captured on the 40. Otto Graham takes to the air. He heaves a long one. Right into the arms of Irish Bob Kelly, and Notre Dame continues its mighty stampede. Now it's Lou Jack to Kelly, who speeds into the end zone. Watch this next one closely. It's a freak play. Dantowitz starts the lateral, but the ball is stolen by Jack Harker, Wildcat substitute, who heads for the goal and Northwestern's only touchdown. <laughs> Brown Field is packed with cheering fans as the lads from Shenango Valley invade Providence. There's a pass by Savage to O'Brien, who takes it and heads for the goal, but steps out of bounds on the seven-yard line. Colgate's ball. On a fake kick, Mulehauser gets going. He tears up the turf for a gain of 30 yards. Brown continues its aerial attack. Savage to Tiedman for a 15-yard advance. Brown's ball. Babcock to Savage for a touchdown for the Bears. Again, Brown's ball. Savage kicks, but it's blocked, and Truman Jenkins falls on it for a touchdown and a win for the Raiders. <laughs> Army meets Navy on the cadets' home field. The midi cheering section is mighty thin, but the Navy goat horns in just the same. Navy's ball. Jim Pettit on a reverse is just inches short of a first down. George Hume gets going. He crashes through the Army Fortress for 15 yards before West Point bombs him down. Third period. Jenkins pilots for Navy and dives across the goal to smokescreen the Army. Now Hal Hamburg pulls one out of the hat. He laterals to Hume, who heads for home. It's Navy's day on Army's ground as Pettit drops anchor over the Army line. But the cadets are good sports and cheer Navy fashion. This third wartime football season has truly been an Army and Navy affair. As you know, 11 of the first 20 teams of the whole country were service teams. This is the first time in 28 years that the Army team has been unbeaten and untied. They have annexed their first national title, replacing such teams as Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Randolph Field. 23 men from the Army and Navy squads have been mentioned for all America honors. We will see most of them in action soon. Our highlights start with the first game of the season, Michigan versus Iowa Seahawks. Bill Slater will do the play-by-play. -play. Take it away, Bill. Thank you, Granny. At Ann Arbor, it's Michigan's ball against Iowa pre-flight. Culligan's pass to Riffenberg fools the pre-flighters, and the Wolverines get the first score of the game.
Now pre-flight ball. On a tricky lateral, Bub Smith gets the pigskin and lopes around left end for 18 yards. After a quick lineup, again Smith around left end. This time, nothing stops him, and he keeps galloping until he scores. With Michigan trailing 7-6, to six, Bill Culligan fades back and gets another long one off to Rippenberg, who scores, and Michigan wins 12-7. The Blue Jackets kick off to the Boilermakers of Purdue. Blue Jackets under full sail. Jim Ewell sparking the attack. He fades back and throws a long one to Jim Mello, who snatches it for one of the most sensational catches of the season. A touchdown for the Sailors. The boys from Great Lakes are rolling. Bob Hanlon driving off to the right. Great Lakes again, and that sharpshooting Blue Jacket ace, Jim Yule, he's one to Jim King. Purdue tacklers throw him for a touchdown, and Great Lakes wins 27-18. Fifty thousand jam the Pitt Stadium as Paul Calamere of the Panthers threatens with a long aerial. It's intercepted by Fitzgerald. Those Irish are letting no chances go by them. The Irish take to the clouds with Frank Dansowitz on the heaving end. A bullseye to Bill O'Connor. It's a touchdown parade for the Irish. This is Bob Kelly, an All-America selection, swinging around end. Brother, that's open field running, as the Irish show their early season 1944 speed and scoring power. Notre Dame 58, pit nothing. This is 1944's major upset. Before the game, Navy was rated six touchdowns better than the pre-flighters. The middies ball, Jim Pettit lugging it when he fumbles. Joe Partington scoops it up for the cloud busters and races for home with Navy's Joe Sullivan right on his heels, but he can't tag him, and it's 55 yards to a touchdown. <laughs> Navy tries again. Fumble recovered. Bob Jenkins, nominated for the 1944 All-America team, goes through pre-flight for an 18-yard gain. Joe Sullivan carrying the midi attack over the beachhead. Touchdown, Navy. Al Hamburg punts for the Navy. Otto Graham, 1943 All-America star of the game, is on the receiving end and running back the kick with three minutes left to play and the score tied. He shoots a lateral to Frankie Ashenbrenner and Frankie races downfield with the winning touchdown. North Carolina pre-flight 21, Navy 14. This game brought together two of the great backs of the year, Manisi of Penn and Davis of Duke. On the first play, it's Speaker to Manisi, and it's good for six points. Again, Penn takes to the air. This time, Manisi to Hellman, and another score. Then the Blue Devils strike, with Tom Davis setting up a scoring play. Here it is. Davis throws for a touchdown, but Pennsylvania wins 18-7. The Yale Bowl crowd at New Haven sees Cornell's Dextrobrin fade back, apparently for a pass, and then get away for a long ground gainer. On the next lineup, it's Dextrobrin again, but this time he really means it, and the long pass is gathered in by John Tully, and over he goes. Now Yale's punt soars almost to the red goal line, and Al Dexterman fumbles. It's swiftly recovered by the Eli's, Roger Barksdale. It's Barksdale again, this time through left tackle, and here comes one for Yale. Yale gathers speed. George Lowe gets one away to his teammate, Paul Walker, who collects 11 yards. 
and Billy Penn completes the upset. Yale 17, Cornell 6. The Seahawks of Iowa pre-flight and Purdue's Boilermakers. In the second quarter, Sullivan of the Seahawks receives a pass and fumbles. Pre-flight Phillips recovers it for a 15-yard gain. Now Samuels of the Seahawks carries. It's a fumble, but pre-flight recover their own ball. McCullough takes the pigskin. Another Seahawk fumble, but this time Purdue gets the ball. Purdue Schultz throws a 25-yard pass to Demanchev, and it's good. Demanchev goes over for a touchdown. Two plays later, the Seahawks strike back. A pass by Purdue is intercepted by Sullivan. Shifting through Purdue's defense, Sullivan goes over. Pre-flight comes from behind to gain a narrow 7-6 lead. Early in the fourth quarter, a poor punt gives the Seahawks the ball on the Purdue 40. Russ Murdy's carries for a 12-yard gain. Murdy's takes it again, 25 yards for a touchdown. Iowa pre-flight down Purdue 13 to 6. <laughs> Navy backfield ace Hal Hamburg runs as 30,000 Baltimore fans cheer him on. It's Hamburg again. This time he completes a forward to Charlie Guy. Guy fakes the lateral and goes over the Duke goal line, standing up. Yeah, man, that's Navy. Duke threatens as Clark heaves a long one to Austin. For a moment it looks good, but it's all wet, and boy, we're not kidding. Again, the Blue Devils take to the air, but they wind up in the soup. Navy sinks them seven to nothing. <laughs> compendious compilation of thick skin pyrotechnics or in two-bit words our annual review of last season's football highlights shall we go here's a play that gave tennessee fans one of their big thrills of the day as buster stevens carried that thing bypassing one sun-kissed lad after another yes sir and good for 32 yards a lot of wild-eyed customers claim that this Trojan touchdown pass was caught outside the playing field. Well, as you can see, it wasn't. That pass was plenty good. It was a bad day for Tennessee. Tulsa's Terry Moss fakes a pass and fools the cameraman. But this time it goes to Shedlowski, who, in stride, lateral. Barney White now has it, and it takes him just five and a half seconds to make Tulsa Rooters romp with rapture. And now the top flight play of the game. Wilson of Tulsa drops the ball. But he recovers, and watch him go right through everybody. Yep, he's on his way. Touchdown bound. No fooling. Another tackler? Ah, but Mr. Wilson is a tricky cookie. It was a titanic triumph for Tulsa. Guys, Les Horvat makes like a pinwheel. A play that helped pile up fancy numbers on the scoreboard for Ohio State. Boy, were those Buckeye babies busy. Sleep on, oh tired, faithful warrior. And when you awaken, you'll have a stiff neck from lying in the wet grass, you dope. The Husky Hoosiers were plenty hot. Horns Myers pass to Armstrong, touched off the fireworks in a play that featured one of the spectacular runs of the day. Teamwork helped Armstrong on his way, and it looked like touchdown stuff for sure, but the play was called back for a clipping penalty. Dartmouth ball, they're fighting hard, but it's a field day at Franklin Field for the mighty pen. Tony Manisi intercepts for the Quakers, and here's a run that gave Dartmouth dizzy spells. Those Indians just couldn't stop them. Everybody was jumping, even the cameraman. Victory day for Quaker Town. 
that. Notre Dame beat Pitt 58 to nothing. Then along came the Army and beat Notre Dame 59 to nothing. Nice going Army, and now it's Max Minor heading for pay dirt and stopping for no one. This was the first time that Army had beaten the Irish in 14 years. <laughs> State's ball carried by freshman Dick Flanagan, and the lad is sensation. Gangway, guys, he's coming through. That kid has fast feet and a busy bean. Yep, look out, partner. That was a 50-yard sprint and a hunk of excitement in anybody's ball game. Now the sailors have the ball, and the customers have goose pimples. Driving through for a stop. Now, now, mustn't hurt. Put him down. There. Now, play nice. Now the Navy plans an air attack with Jim Ewell chucking the old grapefruit to Chuck Avery. Like that. As Chuck scampers on, a Buckeye player ties his shoelace. See? Thank you, mister. <laughs> Illinois' track star, Buddy Young, sprints with the ball. Look at this baby travel. Seventy-four yards to a touchdown. Notre Dame's ball, the score is tied, and here's the deciding play. Where is it? There it is, snuggling under the arm of Chick Maggioli for another long ride. This time it's a 65-yard win for the Irish. The score, 13 to 7. A Georgia Tech pass, and now watch George Matthews in some of the best open field running of the year. And there he is, out in front. Why, nobody can stop him but nobody. So, I'm wrong. Army goes for a kick. And there it is. Who's got it? Duke's got it. No, Army's got it. No, Duke's got it. No, of who? The Army's on a rampage as Dale Hall is helped by a swell block. Ouch! Yep, it's the merry-go-round for dear old Duke. The contest that kept ears of the nation glued to radio loudspeakers. Army's Glenn Davis goes places. Look, a gentleman, he helps him up after trying to break his neck. Again, the Army backfield works like a super speedster, sparked by Glenn Davis, the year's high scorer, pouring on the high octane for high honors in high gear and with high disregard for the rubber. <laughs> Goodbye. Navy battles Duke. Carver of the Blue Devils punts from his own goal line. The midshipman's Kelly takes the kick. Here in the first quarter on Durham Field, he's off for a 23-yard gain. As Annapolis turns on the power, Kelly takes it for six more yards. <laughs> Jenkins takes over. Before 44,000 fans, he smashes through for 14 yards, placing the ball on Duke's one-yard line. Now Jenkins plunges over for touchdown number one. It's Navy six, Duke nothing. Hornsmeyer passes to Bramlett, and it's complete. Eight yards for an Annapolis team facing one of its toughest rivals until Army. Barron speeds through for a 12-yard gain. The midshipmen complete their 52-yard drive as on the third down, Hornsmeyer races 27 yards toward the enemy goalposts. Powerful Navy goes on to win over Duke, 21 to nothing. Notre Dame meets Illinois. Here at South Bend, Jones of the Illini boots the opening kickoff. Ruggiero, Irish back, gets it at Notre Dame's 24. Now watch this. It's the first running play of the game. Bill Colella, making the first play of his college career, has the ball. He's off down the field behind perfect blocking. In one of football's great runs, Colella goes 76 yards to a touchdown. Illinois is beaten in the game's first second. Notre Dame makes the extra point and holds on to win 7-0. Gilmer passes to Lowell, too, as the Crimson Tide battles the Volunteers of Tennessee. It's 13 yards for Alabama, playing at Birmingham. Hodges picks up another five yards. 
climaxing a first quarter 50-yard drive. Gilmer fights through for a touchdown. Alabama six, Tennessee nothing. Two carries for Alabama, leading 13 to nothing in the second quarter. He fumbles, and it's a wild race for the galloping pigskin. Flowers recovers. The Crimson Tide retains possession. Again, the Tide takes to the air. Gilmer wings one to Grant. The accurate 24-yard pass is good for a touchdown. Alabama now leads unbeaten Tennessee 18 to nothing. Once more, Harry Gilmer passes, but Manning of Tennessee intercepts. In the final quarter, he's off on a 50-yard run. The Volunteers, 18 points behind, fight back. Manning is down on the Crimson Tide 40. Lund throws a long pass to Parton, good for 42 yards. Parton steps over with Tennessee's only score of the game. Tennessee's ball, but Stevenson fumbles. Hodges recovers for Alabama. A penalty against Tennessee places the ball just two yards from the goal line. Gilmer goes through to pick up one yard, and Hodges takes care of the other. The Crimson Tide sweeps over Tennessee 25 to 7. Undefeated Purdue meets undefeated Ohio State. DeMoss to the Boilermakers sends down a pass. In the first quarter, Purdue finds itself on the Buckeyes' four-yard line. A great crowd of 75,000 sees Cody go over for the touchdown. Purdue six, Ohio State nothing. Again, DeMoss aims the pigskin. His pass to Canfield is complete. With the game just a few minutes old, Purdue scores a second time against the powerful favored Buckeyes. Right over of Ohio State takes it. He fumbles and Crow of the Boilermakers recovers on the Buckeyes' 43-yard line. Purdue continues its dazzling offensive as Cody gallops 20 yards to within three yards of a touchdown. With seven minutes of the first half gone by, that amazing aerial team of DeMoss to Canfield does it again. As the game's end nears, Ohio State passes for a touchdown, but it's too late. Purdue scores a stunning upset and wins 35 to 13. Army meets Notre Dame. At New York's Yankee Stadium, the U.S. Military Academy's Corps of Cadets marches in. The 75,000 fans see the great undefeated Army team kick off for another battle in their 32-year-old rivalry with undefeated Notre Dame. The Irish return the ball to their own 25-yard line. Hangsman carries for Notre Dame, and it's a fumble. Jeremiah of the Cadets recovers the pigskin. With the game just two minutes old, Army's Glenn Davis is off on a 26-yard run to score standing up. Army seven, Notre Dame nothing. In the second quarter, West Point's Doc Blanchard smashes through. Army's team, one of the mightiest in football history, can't be stopped. Tucker passes to Glenn Davis. Five enemy tacklers are between Davis and the Notre Dame goal line. But watch this 175-pound back move to that goal line. He's over for Army touchdown number two. Third quarter, Notre Dame's Raderman passes to McGurk. The Irish fight to score at least once against the Cadets. Again, Raderman passes. But this time, West Point's Doc Blanchard intercepts, and he's off. Army makes it 16 straight by trouncing Notre Dame 48 to nothing. Before 63,000 at Philadelphia's Franklin Field, 10 battles Columbia. Gene Rossides of Columbia's undefeated Lions throws his fourth successful pass. Cussero takes it to the six-yard line. Here in the first quarter, the team of Rossides to Cussero does it again. Columbia takes a 7-0 lead over favored Penn. Now the Quakers swing into action. Bob Evans wings a pass to Sponago, who gets within five yards of the Columbia goal. Another Evans pass, this time to Jenkins, and Penn has six to Columbia seven. Evans hands the ball to Duba, who's off on a 55-yard run to a touchdown. Columbia falls from the ranks of the undefeated as Penn wins 32 to seven. Here in the third quarter, the fans forget the cold as Michigan fades back to pass. Ohio State's pretty pulls down the pigskin. His interception gives the Buckeyes the ball on their own 42-yard line. Ohio State, last year's Big Ten champion, moves to the attack. Klein smashes through for six yards. With Michigan goalpost still a long way off, Dorothy of the Buckeyes takes to the air. 
The ball goes to Watson for a 35-yard gain. With Ohio State in scoring territory, Michigan holds. It's fourth down and eight yards to go. The Buckeyes try a field goal. It's right between the uprights. Ohio State three, Michigan nothing. In the fourth quarter, with less than 10 minutes remaining, Michigan's Elliott sends a pass to Fundy. It's good for 25 yards, placing the ball on the Buckeye 19. An Ohio State offside penalty places the ball on the one, and Fundy takes it over. Michigan tops Ohio State seven to three. Navy kicks off into a raging wind. The ball travels only to the cadet 25. Army's Arnold Tucker receives the pigskin. The cadets are off to their customary quick start as Tucker gets down to his own 43. Tucker takes it again. After faking the Blanchard, he swings around right end. For an Army team, judged the nation's best, it's 13 yards more, and they've only begun. Tucker laterals to Glenn Davis. Moving fast, Davis sweeps on for 20 yards. He fumbles, but out of bounds. Two Navy offside penalties have advanced the ball. Quarterback Tucker decides to advance it some more. He chalks up another first down. Now Army's pile driver comes into play. Slow motion shows the mighty Doc Blanchard in action as he rams over the Navy line. Coach Blake sees his Army team draw first blood. A Navy kick against the wind goes out of bounds on the middies 37. Army's Tucker takes it from there. The cadet quarterback, who because of illness almost missed the game, smashes through for 25 yards. There's 17 yards to go, and Blanchard to cover them. Slow motion reveals the details of the Doc's power. Watch the fullback, who's rarely stopped, as he tramples all opposition. To Navy Goodman, who wonder what hit them, the answer is Blanchard. Six seconds remain. Bruce Smith heaves a long, desperate pass to speedy Clyde Scott. Scott runs the last 40 yards with Army's Glenn Davis at his heels. Davis passes as Army works to assure its 24th victory over Navy. Blanchard can't reach it, but the officials rule interference, and the cadets get the ball on Navy's 32. Another great Army-Navy contest draws to a thrilling close. Glenn Davis dashes to a touchdown. Army wins 32 to 13. Fireworks right from the opening whistle as Illinois starts off with a bang. Claude Buddy Young sparks it for Illinois and carries the ball half the length of the field for the first score of the season in Pitt Stadium. Now Rykovich gets set. He forwards. It's intercepted by Sacconi, 17-year-old Panther Flash. He races it back 15 yards before he's down. Sacconi again. A short pass and the Panthers are full speed ahead. One yard to go, and the freshman charges over the line to tie it up seven all at the end of the half. Third quarter, and now the going is tough for the Panthers. They're forced to punt. It's a long one down the field. Illinois sends in Chick Maggioli for this one, and he clicks. A fake crisscross, and there he goes, tearing up the turf for 75 yards to wrap up the game for Illinois, 33-7. And the 1946 season is off to a thundering start. Way down south in the land of cotton, Georgia meets Alabama and presents Charlie Trippy, the one-man show. He fights off the Alabamans and unscrambles in time to heave a perfect pass. And there's a big chunk of yardage gained before the Crimson Tacklers take charge. It's Trippy again. As the Alabama linemen surround him, he tosses to Don Edwards, who grabs it in a swan dive catch. Second period. Trippy, one of the great breakaway backs of the year in fast action. When the Crimson Lads threaten, he makes a wide U-turn, and there he goes! Trippy is in the spotlight all day. Off he charges on a 50-yard dash for another touchdown to wrap it up for the Bulldogs, 14-0.
With the score 7-0 for Ohio, Tony James flips a Buckeye pass. The Chicksaw steals for the Wildcats. Now Northwestern takes up rushing tactics. Ashenbrenner crashes through for one of the Wildcats' eight first down. There goes a pass by Daggett. It's speared by Jack McKenzie's fingertips, and Northwestern rides high. 30 seconds left in the half. Daggett heaves and is taken by Murakowski, who goes over to tie it up 13 all. Western still a threat as Frankie Ashenbrenner forward. Tony Adamley, Ohio State's great defensive center, intercepts, and he charges deep into Wildcat territory. There's gloom on the Northwestern bench. Now Joe Whistler hurls across for a Buckeye touchdown, and Ohio forges ahead 32 to 20. Northwestern sends Schwal crashing into the clear. He pounds out 81 yards for a Wildcats tally, but it's not enough as Ohio State wins 39 to 27 in one of the great games of the season. The Irish and the Hawkeyes. Blue Jack is on the beam. He forwards 32 yards to halfback Terry Brennan, who steps over for a touchdown. It's Blue Jack again, fading for a pass. He lets go a long one to end Leon Hart, who makes a smart catch and a 50-yard game for the Irish. Now Bob Sullivan crashes through right tackle, and they're on the one-yard line. Another Notre Dame score as fullback Pinelli hurdles over. Now Mello can't hold Lou Jack's hand out, but Johnny is on the spot. He grabs the pigskin and opens the throttle. Full speed ahead for 45 yards and pay dirt. What a man. A capacity crowd at Braves Field sees the Eagles open up with aerial fireworks. San Sierra, number 43, spearheads the attack. It's a 40-yard pass to Mangin, and the volunteers know they're in a ball game. And Sierra's on the battlefront, but the enemy surrounds him. He snakes his way free and heaves to Ed Burns, who tears up the turf to score for the Eagles. Tennessee takes the offensive, and soon the ball is in touchdown territory. Lund, with a blockade of blockers, sweeps around end to tie it up at the end of the third period. Fourth period, and Lund takes a pass. There he goes for a first down. Minutes to go, and Boston fights back. There's a forward that looks good, but wait. Walt Slater intercepts for the Volunteers and stages a 75-yard dash from his own 25-yard line to put the game in the bag for Tennessee. meet the Trojans down in Southern California. There's a pass. It's intercepted by the mighty battle who bombshells down the field. From the 15, Southern Cal sends Lily White driving through the line all the way for a Trojan tally. With Gray in motion, the action is fast as Mickey McArdle flips him a lateral and he gallops through the enemy line 20 yards before Oregon cuts him down. It's battle again. He tears through the webfoot line and into high gear to outrace the Oregon lads to a touchdown and a big win, 43 to nothing. <laughs> Yale and Harvard clash at Soldier's Field. There's a Harvard pass. It's grabbed by O'Donnell and the Crimson back smashes into the sideline. For the moment, Yale is stunned as Gannon goes over for Harvard. It's Gannon again, climbing through the Eli line in a terrific crimson drive. Gill trails 14-0. First passes. Nat Herney takes it, and it's a jittery moment for Yale as he fumbles the ball. But Jack Roderick recovers, and old Eli cheers. Now the Bulldogs are on their way. An open attack startles Harvard. Nat Herney's on the receiving end, and he's soon surrounded. 
Nat Hurney goes through for a touchdown, and Yale wins. Packed house at West Point. Army's football juggernaut rolls against Columbia. All-America Doc Blanchard sparks the cadet's first touchdown drive, racing to Columbia's 20. A moment later, same man, same play, and it's Blanchard scoring for Army. This time, no Blanchard, but plenty of Glenn Davis, a 14-yard gain. Pausing to catch his breath, Davis passes to end Tom Hayes, a 17-yard maneuver. Blanchard again answers the call to duty through the middle for 18 yards. Now Big Doc plunges for his second touchdown. The mercurial Glenn Davis takes over where Blanchard leaves off and after an out of this world fake on Lou Cassero, completes a 66 yard sprint into pay dirt. Back to kick, Davis fumbles on fourth down. There's nothing for him to do but run, as you can see. And brother, does he go, knocking off a quick 35 yards. Paging Mr. Blanchard over for his third TD. Refreshed by the halftime rest, Davis grabs the second half kickoff, shifts into high gear as he streaks down the gridiron for a neat 54-yard run back. Davis and Blanchard, Blanchard and Davis, Davis, Blanchard. And if you think this is getting monotonous, how do you think Columbia feels? This time, no Blanchard, no Davis. It's halfback Rip Rowan, but the result is the same, a 25-yard gain. Andy Gustafson passes to Hank Foldberg, and Army scores again. Columbia's Lions strike back. Lou Cussero cracks through the cadet line, stopped just short of the goal. Blonsky smacks over for a Columbia touchdown. The Lions now kick off to Army. And who's that waiting for the ball? None other than Lion tamer Doc Blanchard, who starts for the goal line a mere 92 yards away. His cadet teammates clear the way. Doc steps on the gas and roars to his fourth touchdown. Final score, Army 48, Columbia 14. <laughs> brilliant Quaker back passes to end Art Littleton in the end zone for Pennsylvania's first touchdown. Skippy Manisi takes the ball, races wide to his left, cuts down the sideline, is hit at the 25, stays in bounds, and skips to another 10 touchdown. Navy's Johnny Welch passes in the flat to Pistol Pete Williams, who shakes loose for a 44-yard touchdown run. But it's undefeated Penn's day. They sink Navy 32 to 19. Austin, Texas, Bobby Lane, heralded University of Texas fullback, shakes loose on a scintillating 73-yard touchdown gallop against the Oklahoma Aggies in Memorial Stadium. The Aggies try a pass. It's intercepted by center Audrey Gill, and Texas is on the march once more. Tom Landry passes to Byron Guillory, and the Longhorns score again. Perry Samuels takes off on a thrilling 60-yard dash, another versatile performer in the powerful Texas constellation of football stars that makes the Longhorns one of the mightiest football machines in the land. Landry scores and Texas wins 54 to 6. For Davis running to the left, takes a pitch out from Tucker and then thrills the crowd with one of his dazzling open field shows. Eluding two tacklers, Davis picks up speed. Another tackler grabs Glenn's sleeve, hangs on desperately, but Davis wriggles loose, takes a long stride and is over for the score. Davis collide. The ball pops into the air. Fullback Rip Rowan grabs the loose pigskin for Army, but not for long. Rowan fumbles too, and in the ensuing free-for-all, Carrington recovers for Navy. The half ends shortly thereafter, Army 21, Navy 6. A colorful halftime midshipman maneuver. Fourth 
period, basing her laterals to Earl, who hits Bramlett for a TD, Army 21, Navy 18. And cadet coach Earl Blake is plenty worried. Navy's Lynn tuning races 20 yards to a first down on the Army 3. And with just 90 seconds to go, the inspired middies are just nine feet away from one of the greatest upsets of all time. Tuning smacks the left side. The now aroused cadets hold the line. Tuning tries the right side. Army digs in and stops him cold. Can Navy make it? Hawkins takes the ball, laterals out to Williams, but Army's terrific goal line stand sinks the Navy 21 to 18 in a hair-raising finish. The excited crowd surges onto the field for a last look at Doc Blanchard and Glenn Davis. 60-minute players in their farewell to football. This is Mel Allen, your official film sports reporter, bringing you the highlights of 1947's major football spectacle. 59,000 frantic fans pack the stands at South Bend as Notre Dame takes the field against Army. Mack Mull kicks off for the cadets, and Notre Dame's Terry Brennan takes the ball on the three-yard line and races for the goal while his teammates clear the way down the field. A sensational 97-yard run puts Brennan over for a touchdown to start the game while Army coach Blake watches ruefully. Notre Dame soon advances again as Johnny Lujak tosses the ball to Leon Hart for a snappy gain of 25 yards. Battling the tough West Point line all the way, Swistowicz fights his way for another eight yards for the Irish. It's Terry Brennan again, scoring another thrilling touchdown on an off-tackle play. Notre Dame 13, Army nothing. In the fourth quarter, an end run by Army's Bobby Stewart brings the ball to the four-yard line. Rowan smashes to the one-yard mark. And then on the next play, it's Rowan again, over for the touchdown. The Army's first against the Leahy coach Notre Dame team. Coach Leahy doesn't like it, although Notre Dame is ahead 20-7. And the Irish gallop again, Swistowicz cleverly picking off 18 yards around the Army club. Larry Coutre is next to score for the South Bender, smashing off tackle for 11 yards, and Notre Dame's final touchdown in its victory over Army, 27-7. A crowd of 50,000 in Dallas watch Southern Methodist make a quick start as Dope Walker passes to Dick McKissick for a gain of 15 yards to the Texans' two-yard strike. Dashing around end, Paul Page scores the first Mustang touchdown just three minutes after the starting whistle. And now SMU calls on Gil Johnson to pitch a long pass. He does. Walker jumps high to take it, then sprints to the one-yard line for a thrilling 56-yard gain. McKissick then cracks through center for an SMU touchdown. In a drive to even the score, Bobby Lane of Texas tosses a 23-yard pass to Jim Kennedy. Lane's next flip to Gillery is good for a touchdown, but the Texans miss the extra point, and SMU wins 14-13. 49,000 jam Princeton's Palmer Stadium to watch Penn beat the Tigers. Evans' 15-yard run gives Penn a first down on Princeton's eight. Tony Manisi, playing a great game, goes over for Penn's first score. This time, Manisi takes the ball to the goal line, where Princeton tries to steal it but the attempted pigskin larceny doesn't work. Now Manisi carries the ball to a touchdown as Princeton tries once more to steal it. Too late. From his 35-yard line, Dick West of Princeton passes to George Sella, who starts running and doesn't stop for 55 yards, scoring Princeton's lone tally of the game. Bob Graham, Penn fullback, now carries the ball, nimbly evading the opposition, running 44 yards goalward when he's stopped by a tackle from behind. Passing for Penn is Bob Evans, whose toss is caught by Don Schneider, just one yard from Princeton's goal line. Bill Luongo scores. Penn beats Princeton 26-7. Before 42,000 cheering spectators, halfback Harry Zoborski gains 13 yards for Purdue against Notre Dame. 
Bob DeMoss, Purdue quarterback, throws a short pass to Zoborski for a touchdown, and Purdue ties the score in the first quarter, 7-7. But the Irish fight back. Johnny Lujak getting away a fast pass that drops into Larry Coutre's waiting hands for a Notre Dame gain of 32 yards. Dropping back for another pass, Lou Jack finds his receiver bottled up, so Johnny carries the ball himself. A thrilling 33-yard run to a touchdown, and Notre Dame leads 13 to 7. It's Purdue's ball. George Papish punts, and the big skin is taken by Notre Dame's Coy McGee, who runs it back in a thrilling dash that carries him 40 yards. Just watch him go. Floyd Simmons goes over as Notre Dame takes Purdue 22 to 7. At Baltimore, Maryland, the eyes of 35,000 are on Pettit of Georgia Tech as he hurls a 17-yard pass to Broadnax on the opening play against Navy. Bob McCoy, Tech's rookie halfback, takes the ball and slips around in for a good run. Bob eludes Basinger, sending the midshipman sprawling into a pond of water, and then runs 50 yards down the field to score a touchdown. And now it's Navy's ball, and Horn makes a neat flip to Al McCulley for an eight-yard advance. Horn passes again, sending a lateral out to Schwerferman, who races straight for the goal line, putting Navy ahead 7-6. In the fourth quarter, Schrefferman takes the ball for Navy and fumbles as Broadnack makes a smashing tackle. Tech recovers on the Navy 35. With only a few minutes to go, Patton's 30 yards forward to Southern Flicks, and Tech defeats Navy 16 to 14. At Columbia's Baker Field, a capacity 35,000, watch Art Fitzgerald's pass to Johnny Satir connect for a Yale first down. Now it's Tex first who flips one to Satir for another first down, part of an 83-yard march down the field. On fourth down, Billy Boo kicks a perfect 15-yard field goal, putting the Elis ahead 3-0 at halftime. Columbia's Lou Cussero tries a desperate long forward pass, but Fitzgerald intercepts it for Yale. Now the Bulldogs take the offensive. Fuchs carries a round end for 15 yards. Bandy Kirk cracks over for Yale. Columbia fights hard as Lou Cussero's aerial makes a perfect landing in Bill Swiecki's arms for a 27-yard gain. Yablonski climaxes an 80-yard Columbia drive with an exciting 27-yard touchdown run, but Yale upsets the Lions 17-7. An even more sensational upset is in the making when Army meets Columbia. Gustafson of West Point takes the pigskin for a spectacular 28-yard run. Rowan smashes through as powerful Army takes the lead. With Army ahead 14-0, the Lion roars defiance. Rossidi's toss to Swiecki is good for 32 yards. Lou Cassero carries the pigskin around in for Columbia's first touchdown. West pointer Rowan takes the ball through the enemy tacklers just before the first half ends and carries it safely on a brilliantly executed 84-yard journey downfield to a touchdown, giving Army a comfortable 20-7 lead. McMull's failure to convert doesn't worry the cheering cadets at this time. Rossidi's aerial to the end zone is received by Bill Swiecki in a phenomenal catch which Army disputes. But here official film shows in stop motion that the pigskin did not touch the ground before Swiecki caught it. And the football rules provide clearly that when an opposition player holds the ball in the end zone, it's a touchdown. Though Army is still ahead 20 to 14, Columbia fights on gamely. Rossidi sprints 21 yards to the 35-yard line. A Columbia touchdown will even the count. A conversion will put them ahead. Time is short. Rossidi fades to pass, throws to Swiecki, who makes another great catch. From the three-yard line now, Cussero plunges over to tie the score. Jablonski makes that extra point, and Columbia downs Army 21 to 20 in the greatest upset of the year. <laughs> With the 
tail end of summer too warm for comfort, southpaw Tony Manisi is in there pitching. But this time he fools the Lions and circles in for the Quakers' first score. Now Al Sika fires a pass to Art Littleton, and the Quaker end tears up the turf for 61 yards. Bob Evans is back to pass, but he's ganged up. He runs, stops, passes, and it's intercepted by Columbia's Cussero, who takes off like a jackrabbit and runs it back 61 yards to a touchdown. The Lions' Gene Rossitis hides the ball on his hip as he circles left end to sprint 52 yards. Columbia scores as Rossitis forwards to Swiaki, but it's Penn's game. The stands are jam-packed to witness a game of spectacular plays starting right after the opening whistle. Harry Gilmer runs back a Georgia punt and cheers the heart of the Bama, scoring the first touchdown of the ball game. Georgia takes the helm with a second period pass routes to Marisic. He runs into rough going, but a two-man block paves the way, and now Georgia takes heart. Alabama in the spotlight again. Lowell, too, takes off from his own 17. Shoots through the middle, and he's Alabama bound. snaps the ball to Cadenhead on a lateral, and the underdogs from Alabama win 17 to 7. It's the 33rd gridiron meeting of these colleges. A long punt by Edelman soars far down the field. It's caught by Michigan Delian, and he roars down the turf to chalk up the first score of the game. goes into action with Steger blazing through center, cutting down the Wolverine defense and piling up a gain of 53 yards. With the first half nearly over, Chappius heaves one for Michigan. It's taken by Elliott, who scrambles away for a gain of 52 yards. He winds up on the four, but a penalty brings it back to the nine. And then Fondy crashes through, and it's victory for Michigan. Penn State's Elwood Petchel gets going with a heap to Ray Ulinski, and they're off to a roaring start. Petchel again. And Jeff Dakota takes it for Penn State's first touchdown. Now Syracuse helps the opponent's cause with four fumbles. Chekow recovers this one. Pupil of Syracuse spots his man, but the ball takes a detour. Luther of State snares it, and again, Syracuse is in trouble. Rogel again, right through for seven yards. And then a quick lateral to Paler, who takes it for still another touchdown. and 2,000 fans see this contest. Bruins ball. Carl Benton hurls. It's intercepted by Don Gall, and they both know there's a real fight on the gridiron today. The game's only score. Trojan Jim Powers heats to Kirby, and the second period ends six to nothing. Now the Bruins are mad as bears, and there's a fine tangle of everything in the book. Benton passes, and there's a lateral to Tom Fears. Another lateral, a fumble, and what the fans think is a touchdown, but the referee rules no goal. The Bruins threaten. On a fourth down, Johnson takes a lateral and heaves to the end zone. But Frey intercepts and shatters all their hopes. It's 
a great day for the Irish. Tulane's Von Meter in action. He heaves a pass. It's intercepted by Terry Brennan, who turns on the steam and runs it back, but veers out of bounds in the shadow of the goal. Now Sitko takes it over for Notre Dame. Blue Jack in action. A pass to the end zone that's perfect. This time Gompers carries the pigskin and he's off like a battering ram for 40 yards. Price takes it and nails down another for Notre Dame. Tulane fights back. Finley kicks. It's taken by Livingston and he hits the trail for 70 yards right down to the 10. plunges over and the Irish win their eighth straight. Plenty of action and thrills in the Yale Bowl as Eli's first limbers up with a pass to Satir for a nice game. Now Harvard's Canary answers back with an aerial that floats right into the end zone and into the hands of Moffat. Harvard's Lazaro gets the assignment and picks up yardage and how. Here in slow motion is a charge through center that chalks up a touchdown, even though he nearly stumbles out of it. Slow motion again with first going around end and over, and the Blues beat the Crimsons 31 to 21. Cheers and college yells, President Truman greets the rival captains and wishes them success. Right off the reel, the Navy's Bill Hawkins forges into Army territory, but fumbles, and when they unravel, it's the Army's Bryant with the ball. Now Army takes to the air. Rowan heaves the bullseye to Bill Kellum, who breaks away for the game's first touchdown. Navy fights back. Horn fires one to Ark Markle, and the middies again sail into Army territory. They dash ahead and down to the 11-yard stripe, but the cadets hold. And here's the big thrill of the day. Rip Rowan, the Army's bundle of dynamite, explodes. And through fine blocking, he battles his way into the clear for a 92-yard dash all the way home. Army's day all the way, and another chapter in football history. invade Illinois and bring along a big gun named Bobby Jack Stewart who packs plenty of ammunition. He's off like a bullet for a 55-yard gain before Illinois trips him. More bombing for the cadets and this time Winfield Scott gets going on the longest run of the afternoon. With goal in sight, Pierce nudges him out. Illinois is fighting man. With the score 26 to nothing against them, Tom Stewart passes to Schmidt. Trouble ahead for the Army. Benoit kicks. And under it is that fleet-footed fellow named Pierce, and he pierces through the West Pointers for plenty of yardage. by two touchdowns, Illinois calls on Kruger. His long heap is taken on the run by Kersoulis, and that's the end of the game. <laughs> Things happen fast in Athens when Rogers' pass is hauled in by Marisic of Georgia. 
The fleet-footed halfback pounds the turf for more than 75 yards to a touchdown. With Georgia ahead in the third period, Charlie Justice steps in the picture. He passes to Powell to set up the first Tar Heel touchdown. Now Justice, whose gridiron name is Choo Choo, steams through center for his second touchdown, but not his last. Gary of the Bulldogs kicks. And under it is the Asheville flash. He streamlines it for the thrill play of the afternoon. That's justice for you. It's a scoreless tie with only 15 minutes to go. When the Gophers come to life and send halfback Everett Foss down the field on a 68-yard dash that leaves the spectators limp. It's Foss again. This time passing to Bud Grant. Good for 17 yards. With time running out, Hatch of Washington heaves an aerial. It soars high. Dale Warner of Minnesota's waiting and intercepts. With only a few plays remaining, Dick Lawrence lets go a heave of 40 yards into the arms of Dick Anderson, and the Gophers win 20 to nothing. <laughs> Shipman meet the Irish, and there's plenty of action as Notre Dame Sitko tears down the field in a 60-yard run. Later, with the middies in possession, Bob Horn aerial. But the Irish intercept, and it's more gloom for the Navy. There goes that Sitko again. He sparks the Notre Dame attacks and reels off 45 yards before the Navy surrounds him. Navy fights all the way but runs into stormy seas when Sailor intercepts Basinger's aerial. Sailor turns on the speed and beats it back 50 yards with some nice blocking by his teammate. Near the end of the game, Frank Spaniel dogs his way goalward, and Notre Dame wins 41 to 7. Over 68,000 fans crowd Memorial Stadium and cheer themselves hoarse as dazzling Doak Walker totes the ball past the field of Texas Longhorns to chalk up the Mustangs' first touchdown. The Longhorn stage a short but sharp stampede as Capel sets up his team's first and only tally with a big chunk of yardage. Borneman scores deep in the heart of Texas Rooters. Texas says never say die as a Mustang pass is intercepted by Pyle and for a time it looks as if the Longhorns might turn the tide. But fate steps in. Texas fumbles, and Southern Methodist recovers. Now Robert swings into action for Southern Methodist. The finale comes as Walker passes to Blakely, and Southern Methodist wins 21 to 6. <laughs> Wildcats are up to scratch as Murakowski hits the line for plenty of yardage. Here's a thriller. Quarterback Burson back for a pass. He's trapped. No, he's in the clear. And there it goes, an aerial first class. And a honey of a catch by Tonicliffe. Buckeyes charge back with Crawl in the spotlight. With fine blocking by his teammates, Crawl keeps on going to the goal line. Now Johnny Miller scores his second touchdown and the Wildcats win 21 to 7.
When unbeaten gridiron great clash head on, something has got to give. Penn State starts the fireworks with a human dynamo named Rochelle forging his way through to the coal strike. The Quakers come close to tying things up, but in the fourth quarter, the Natani Lions go to town. Elwood Petchel, Penn State's one-man merry-go-round, gets the enemy all mixed up in a razzle-dazzle. Penn State's superior air attack tells. Tam Bureau carries this Petchel pass, and he almost gets away, but Bednarik stops him on the 13. Another pass, Petchel to Rogel, and it's a shutout victory for Penn State. Right from the start at Harvard Stadium, as Mossy of the Crimson sets off the fireworks with an 80-yard run from Scrimmy. Now Levi Jackson of Yale goes for first down, and the Eli's are jubilant. Tex first, Eli Quarter uncorks the long one. It's taken by Satir and a beautiful catch. It's seven to six for Yale when Crimson takes over. Behind a wave of blockers, Charlie Roche goes for 36 yards, just short of the goal line. Moffey of Harvard tries to get through, but is hit hard. Position and excitement go hand in hand as Roche gets away and Harvard triumphs 20 to seven. with Purdue leading 13 to 12. Notre Dame's John Finelli recovered Punzel's partially blocked kick and raced 70 yards to the promised land, putting the Fighting Irish out in front 18 to 13 in a free-scoring thriller diller. Leading 21 to 13, Notre Dame's quarterback, Frank Trapuca, faded back and flipped a 14-yard pass to Bill Gay, but the Irish drive stalled. In the closing minutes of plays, Imajewski of Notre Dame stole Bob DeMoss's pass for another Irish touchdown. With the final seconds ticking off and trailing 28 to 20, the Boilermakers of Purdue fought on desperately, picking up 35 yards on a pass interference ruling, which set them up in dangerous scoring position. Purdue scored, but Notre Dame won 28 to 27. Opening strong against the Texas Longhorns, North Carolina scored as Charlie Justice passed to end Art Williams. Continuing the attack, Carolina's Jose Rogers handed off to Bill Flamish, who gained 13 yards. Setting up another scoring threat by way of the air lanes, Choo Choo Charlie Justice passed to Big Bill Weiner. On the succeeding play, Justice flipped another aerial to Bob Cox for the TD. Flashing the form that won him All-American selection, Justice ripped off a seven-yard gain. Hayes tallied, and the Tar Heels upset the Longhorns 34 to seven. At Champaign, with West Point leading Illinois seven to nothing, All-American Bobby Stewart set up the Army in position for a second score with a brilliant 58-yard run. Army's Gil Stevenson plunged through the Illini line 11 yards for a touchdown, making it West Point 14, Illinois nothing. Continuing the pulverizing ground attack, Cadet Winfield Scott swept his end and scampered 72 yards before being overtaken by the Illini secondary and knocked out of bounds on the six-yard line. Hucan of the Army bucked over for another score. Fighting back grimly, Illinois took to the air as Kruger faded back, found his receiver, and passed it to Shulis for a touchdown. 
but the final score was Army 26, Illinois 21. On hand at Yankee Stadium for the intersectional game between the Black Knights of West Point and the Stanford Indians from California were General and Mrs. Ike Eisenhower. Here, too, is General Maxwell Taylor, superintendent of the academy with Mrs. Taylor. The future generals took the field in quest of their seventh consecutive victory this season. With overwhelming power, Army opened up the red-shirted line of Stanford for Gil Stevenson, who galloped 45 yards to the Indians' 10-yard line. Stevenson bucked over for the first Army touchdown. The West Point quarterback, Galifa, faded back and passed to right end Parrish, who picked up considerable yardage before being hauled down from behind. On another pass attempt, Galifa let fly a long heave into the end zone, but overshot his intended receiver, much to the dismay of the Army mule. Again taking to the airwaves, Galifa tossed to Bobby Jack Stewart, who gained 17 yards. On a reverse, Stewart skirted his left end for another touchdown as West Point crushed Stanford. At South Bend in the opening period, Notre Dame staged a sustained march as Pinelli gained 10 yards against the Northwestern Wildcats. Right end Leon Hart picked up 11 yards on a deceptive end-around play. Pep Pinelli bucked over for the touchdown and the Fighting Irish led 6-0. Now watch this play as the ball seems to turn into a hot potato with everybody getting into the act. Trapuca's pass was finally snared by Zurablev of Northwestern, but then he fumbled and Notre Dame finally recovered. This time the Irish weren't so lucky as Tom Worthington intercepted Trapuca's pass and returned the ball five yards before slipping out of bounds. But it was tit for tat as Don Burson's pass for Northwestern was intercepted by Bill Gay of Notre Dame. As the third period ended, Trapuca again faded back and shot an aerial, which was intercepted by Murakowski of Northwestern on his own eight-yard line. On a brilliant run back of 92 yards, Murakowski scored a touchdown and put the Wildcats out in front, 7-6. to six. And now, with seconds of play remaining, it looked like the end of Coach Frank Leahy's victory streak, but Landry gained 11 yards for the Irish through center. And then... Bill Gay smashed over a moment later to score, and Notre Dame won 12 to 7. The first touchdown for Army comes when Falberg goes over with Galifas pass. A few minutes later, Army Field General Galifa heaved the 35-foot pass to Jim Kane, and he takes it for 45 yards and six more points for Army. Another touchdown in the making as Kane raises Kane with the Lions. There's Galifa passing again, and Kane scores once more. Columbia gets the break. Tracy's pass is deflected into Ward's hands and the Lions roar. From the 17, Tracy passes again and this time Ben Bellingham takes it and goes over for Columbia. Then Columbia has to kick off to Army. And you guessed it, Army safety man is Jim Kane. He's already accounted for three touchdowns with number four coming up. 63 to 6 for Army. Early in this game, the Irish really get tough, with Bob Williams telling Larry Coutre to see what's cooking, so Larry steams up and cooks plenty. In the first 15 minutes of play, the Irish roll up 27 points. This time, Williams is passing to Whitekin, and he almost makes it. There goes Coutre, making it official. 
Tulane comes to life. And watch this. Bonar to Sheffield, and it's a grand play that brings up the hopes of Tulane. But Notre Dame is not to be denied. Spaniel takes it, and the Irish win 46-7. We're in Dudley Field, and Arkansas kicks to Vanderbilt, and there's action from the start as Nally gets going and is nearly knocked down by a teammate. There are plenty of Commodore fans on hand to cheer Nally on. But the Razorbacks from Arkansas are on their toes. Wade to Vanderbilt spots his man, he thinks, but Captain Duke of Arkansas grabs it at the goal line. Now the Porkers set out to bring home the bacon. Gino Mazzotti, a substitute fullback, breaks loose for the thrill play of the afternoon. 77 yards through the favored Vanderbilt team. Now on a fourth down, the Razorbacks hammer away and chalk up the close win of 7-6. <laughs> by Bill DeYoung, the big 200-pounder from Ontario, California, the visitors from Palo Alto completely dominate the play. From the eight, Boyd Benson, the native Washingtonian, scores the first goal against the Huskies. Now the Indians whoop it up. To Corey and to Lasco to Andrews for a razzle-dazzle that stuns the Huskies. But they fight back and trap Andrews as he tries to skirt the Washington flank. Here comes a pass. Kerkorian dropping one into the arms of Big Bill McCall for six more points. Then Stanford's Bob White gets the assignment. And there's another touchdown coming up. That's not all. Bud Klein wants to put the game well in the bag for Stanford, and does. There are plenty of midshipmen on hand, and Emil Sitko is here, too, with a few more Notre Dame gritters. There's Bob Williams passing to Ernie Zaleski, Notre Dame's mystery man, who celebrates his first real assignment with a touchdown. There's Larry Coutre, fast-stepping back on Coach Lay's team, going 91 yards for the most spectacular run of the game. Sitko again, and he bangs his way across for another tally. But the middies fight hard and stick to the slogan, never give up the ship or the game. Williams again, and again to Zaleski. He tallies three times for the Irish. Now John Landry scores, and it's Notre Dame all the way. The Boston Yanks put on quite a show against their ancient rivals, Clemson. There's the Eagles, Al Canava, trying to get out of trouble. It's a razzle-dazzle with Canava hitting all points of the compass. Boston on the march, song and way out. Laterals to Batella for a nice play, and in less than a minute after this play, Boston scores. But Dixie says, look at this. Calvert lets go to Cone, and he starts moving. Clemson fans go wild about this one. A Boston pass takes a detour, and Calvert heads for the goal line. But this time, Boston is top. Sungen tosses to Roar, and that spells victory for the boys from Beantown. The Californians begin to click as Solari of the Golden Bears passes to Ward. It's a goal as Big Jim Menachino jams his way through. With the score 7-7, seven seven, Johnson of the Bruins passes. It's a neat catch by Wilkinson who heads for pay dirt. 
With Wilkinson's touchdown, UCLA forges into the lead, but can't hold it as the superior strength of the Bears tells in the second half tally. Here's Soleri doing a bang-up job. He tosses one to Brunk as the Golden Bears roll on to victory. There goes Levi Jackson, the Eli Speedy Negro captain, chalking up a first down. From the 35, it's Jackson again, and he really goes through. Here comes first blood for Yale in this 66th meeting of the traditional rival. Here's Bobby Raines pouring it on. And also Ferdinand Herney, another sparkling backfield star in the last game of his football career. In the second quarter, Stu Tisdale pitches one to Jackson in the end zone, and it counts for six more points. Now watch this boy Reigns turn on the heat. He goes 45 yards deep into Harvard territory. They stop Reigns, but there's no stopping Eli. Ned Herney bangs across, and Yale wins 29 to 6. Notre Dame Michigan State game at East Lansing. Leading 14 7 in the second half, the Irish send quarterback Bob Williams on a bootleg play. A dazzling 40 yard gallop for the touchdown. A fumble in the Notre Dame backfield, but Williams picks it up to gain ground around end. Emil Sitko with the ball. He stampedes all the way for another tally. Twenty-seven to seven, and the floodgates are open. Williams passes to Bill Whitekin for ten. The next one goes for the distance. Williams to Hart, and the Irish have thirty-four points. In the dying moments, Gene Glick of Michigan State throws a desperation pass. It connects with Bob Carey for thirty-eight yards. The last heave is good too, but the touchdown comes too late. Notre Dame wallops Michigan State 34 to 21. North Carolina State trails North Carolina 6-0 at Chapel Hill. Bill Thompson of State chased to the sidelines, lobs a running aerial to Tony Ramanowski for 21 yards. Paul Bruno's handoff to Paul Dynan clicks for 16 more. State really pressing the Tar Heels now. Tailback Bill Thompson lugs it over for State. Now they're only a point behind, 7-6. And just as the tension gets unbearable, a dog strays on the field. But he doesn't stop Billy Hayes of the Tar Heels, who crashes for 12 yards. Mike Carver, subbing for All-America Choo Choo Justice, connects with Ken Powell as North Carolina fights for a score. Just as they begin to move, Hayes fumbles. Watch the scramble. State recovers. Vic Kaiser carrying for the Staters through the middle for nine. But they're held later. Kaiser has to punt, and he gets away a beauty. Charlie Justice takes it. His reverse fools everyone, including the cameraman. Skeet Hesmer has the ball and a brilliant 85-yard sprint for a touchdown. North Carolina beats State 26-6. Gallipa of Army passing against Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. It's complete to Dan Fulberg for 12 yards. The cadets trail 6-0. Speedster Jim Kane around the flank. Here comes the tying touchdown. After Army tallies again, Penn fights back. Reds Bagnell throws to Harry Wetlaufer to the 10. Another Quaker aerial, Bagnell to Warren Horton. A score, but the West Pointers are still on top by one point. Penn 
driving in the final second. Bob Duber skirts the end, stopped 10 yards away from pay dirt. A Penn field goal attempt, a furiously charging Army line blocks it to avert the upset of the season. The cadets win a squeaker 14-13. Raided Tulane met Georgia Tech early in the season at New Orleans before a sellout crowd. Tulane's publicized fullback Eddie Price rips through the Yellow Jacket line. George Kinnick carrying this time for a 14-yard gain. Quarterback Joe Ernest fading for a long pass. A miraculous catch by Kinnick, and it's a touchdown. What a play. Jimmy Souther trying to throw Tech back into the game. But it's intercepted by Bob Jones, who races upfield to the 43. Tulane hanging on to a six-point edge. Fourth quarter, they're moving for the crusher. Price rams through, a step away from Pater. Ernst on a quarterback sneak, but Tech's forward wall holds. No score. Bill Sloboda taking his crack now. Into the pileup and over. Tulane goes on to win 18 to nothing. Philadelphia, Penn and Cornell meet for the Ivy League title as 75,000 watch the Turkey Day Classic. Penn's Ray Dooney is shaken into the clear, 40 yards to the seventh. Dooney again, a buck into the middle, he's over. The Quakers ahead, 7-0. After Cornell ties it up, Penn goes for more. Red Spagnell nearly smeared. Then he gets his pass away. Harry Wetlaufer has it in the end zone for the tally. Behind by eight points, Cornell sends Jeff Fleischman wide. Watch him sidestep three tacklers to score. A 21-19 thriller now. Bagnell trying to ice it for Penn. But it's plucked out of the air by Charlie Taylor, who races back to the 30. Penn, Cornell catch up. Here's their last chance. Fourth down, Lynn Dorsett throwing. Dick Chamberlain makes the catch and steps over. A dying gasp rally by Cornell beats Penn for the Ivy crowd, 29 to 21. Bob Williams of Notre Dame launches a pass against Southern California at South Bend. Caught by Heisman Trophy winner Leon Hart, who scores for the Irish. See him leave that tackler behind. Now the Pacific Coast boys have Jim Powers passing. Watch the Notre Dame defense. John Pettibon intercepts, dances along the sidelines, and scores. The Fighting Irish tally 13 points in 90 seconds. The route continues in the second half. Frank Spaniel gets loose for 50 yards. Ernie Zaleski powers for nine more. Bill Barrett scores as Notre Dame massacres Southern Cal 32 to nothing. One hundred two thousand in Philadelphia's Municipal Stadium for the game of games, the Army-Navy battle. Arnold Gallip of the Cadets fading for a pass, can't find a receiver, puts his head down and he runs. yard gain on that one. Now he's back again. This time it's a toss, complete to Frank Fischel to the 11. Power play in the making. Gil Stevenson bulls across as Army starts a parade of touchdowns. Stevenson high-stepping again. He'll get to the 28. Galippa ending his career in a blaze of glory. He cocks his arm, a perfect shot to Dan Foberg, who's caught a stride away from Pater. 
Fullback Stevenson takes it the rest of the way. It's 31-0. After Coach Red Blake clears the bench, Herb Johnson goes to the two for the cadet. Johnson scores. Army sinks Navy 38-0. Thank <laughs> you.